Hello and welcome to the channel and this video about building an automatic shuttle unit shelf layout. So in front of you as you can see is a DMU going along the line into where a station will be based. It is going to stop and then it will go back without me actually doing anything because it is being controlled by a shuttle unit. So this video will go through how I've got to this stage so far, what equipment I have used and go through what I plan on doing moving forward. So starting with the basics, in front of you is an IKEA floating shelf, um, which I picked up our Facebook marketplace for about £10. Uh, the measurements are 190 centimetres by 26, uh, which is about six foot by one foot. The idea is to have a four foot scenic area where the locomotive is right now, and then a two foot area where behind the bridge where the two lines are going to be stored. Um, so in this video I'm going to go through what I've used so far, the electronic side of things, um, go through the track plan and then go through what I want to do moving forward. So hopefully you enjoy this video and find it interesting. There will be a mini series of these um, but let's go from stage one then. So what's the plan? So we're going to have a scenic section this side um, with a station area it's on a slight curve um, just to allow better photo video opportunities there's going to be a point and um, going off from the station onto two different lines so i can change the different train and um, coming in and out from the shuttle unit also a little side in there which will be just not used just for maybe an old wagon or coach or not that so there's the four foot scenic side then that's going to be split with that road bridge and on this side is going to be two lines to hold two different trains so for example i've got a dmu and then i've got the black steam locomotive so this is the actual shuttle unit itself this is from block signaling but i'll go through that um in a few minutes um but yeah that's basically the plan so four foot scenic area two foot roughly just to store the trains in but let's go through what I'm actually using to get the shuttle run working. So this is what I've got. It's a simple shuttle SS1 from Block Signaling. Uh, I bought this just before COVID, sat in a drawer and never been used. So I thought it's about time I used it. So there's your diagram instructions. To it. So it basically allows you to run a locomotive up stops and then back again. Uh, and it allows you to choose how long it stops and then you can come back up the track. And then to get this to work, I have brought a gauge master analog controller, combi controller, the best on the market realistically for DC use. And then I've also got the analog wall mounted power, which will basically power the block signaling unit itself. So the controller will power the actual locomotive and then the mounted power plug will actually power the shuttle unit itself. So the shuttle unit itself, let's look at that now. So I'm going to go through what I've been using. So the wiring um, is just 0.2 mil wire. Um, as you can see from the prices, cheap as anything. I bought this, as you can see, ages ago. Um, so that's the red and black and then I've got green as well. It's all cheap stuff. So 0.2 mil. Um, I have been using these as well, um, just to save me soldiering, it's all you do. You can pick these up from me. I think I picked these up from Wilco, or it might have even been Wix, one of the two. Um, and you literally unscrew them, put the wire in, and tighten it up. And then to get to the track to save me soldering, uh, I've been using, let me get one out, these pre soldered ones, and these Pico. So there's the wire, zoom out. Yeah, so you put that into the terminal blocks, that onto the track. Hey presto, no soldering, simple as that. And then we'll go through that in a second. So the combi wire, which is the controller, comes down. So there's my controller. And then that then goes two wires in the back of it. These came with the actual controller. So you wire them into the controller, just screw them in. And then they go into here, being the bottom right hand two terminals. And all you do is to screw them in. So as you can see, so it's this one here. 
and then the other two as you can see the bottom two left they go which are these so it goes from that power so it's power of the unit all the way down then there's a little connection wire which it plugs into and then you can just put the wire into there and that powers the actual unit itself so that power wise that's all sorted the top four terminals are the ones which go to the track so as you can see the power is now done the controller is all into the bottom four terminals all sorted hey presto we have power <laughs> moving forward then so we need it we'll start from the left and we'll work our way to the right so the first one is this one so this is that block so i've got a green wire coming off it splits into two on mine because i've got two sides side but it's exactly the same so the wire goes to the near side of the track to camera there is then a track break like on the diagram you can't really see the track break on the diagram but there is a track break and i've done it in more or less exactly the same location on both tracks so one there and one there as you can see the wire connection is to the left of the track and brake moving then down we've got another one but goes straight into the middle so this terminal goes straight into the middle and that powers the track i've put this side of the point so it allows me to power both sidings as such so if i zoom out then we'll go back in so then i can just choose which point siding i can do and that powers that perfect moving on we have then this one which goes to the end of the track on the right hand side after the track break so this is the third one for coming along goes all the way along i need to tie all the wires and cut them shorter but so it goes into there and then as you can see there's a track break here so again it's on the other side and then the other side if we go back to the diagram we have the east end as it's called on here which is this furthest one which goes along again and is the other side of the track brake and this enables basically the train to stop and then go back again it's quite simple the diagram does its job really nicely um all you need is a pair of wire strippers just to cut the wire um but it's quite simple really now i've made it slightly more complicated because obviously i've got a point involved and two sidings but it works exactly the same so yeah just need to tie the wiring up and screw it goes under the board so there's my trap brakes just did them with a little saw and then just a bit of sandpaper tied them up but yeah that's how the simple wiring process has been done so i've turned the power on and as you see the combi now has its light on and then the shuttle unit has a light so at the minute they are both in the left hand side and then there you go the light's gone red and little thomas has gone it is stopped after the cut in the track and then once the shuttle unit changes color thomas will then come back hopefully you can change the amount of time it waits but as you can see, the light's gone yellow and time is now coming back. And it basically stops once it goes past the track brake. If I change the point, now the power will now go to this line, not the bridge. And now then the J15 then will go once the light goes to red. Again, you can change the power, um, the speed, sorry, using the combi controller. And then once it gets past the track brake, it stops. And again, it will then go back once the light changes on the shuttle unit. Um, so we'll just watch that come back. And if I just move Thomas out of the way a little bit, you can see it's gone past the track brake. So that's how that works. There's that there, you put a little screwdriver in there and then you can turn the dial 
and then if I go to quickly to the instructions you can change it so you can go from one second all the right way to 10 minutes so it depends how long you want the train or the locomotive to stop at either side I've got it for about I think 30 seconds roughly um, so the idea is then I'm going to have this is old scaled out stuff this is spare stuff um, I think I'm going to use this just use it because it's sat in the drawer at the minute so I'm going to have a station down this end where the train's going to come and go in front of it I'm going to have a road or a site or um, a car park not decided because I've got loads of Oxford diecast vehicles now so I might display them so a slight curve in the track there because I didn't want everything to be uniform and straight um, just adds a bit of something different siding at the back so for example I've got this old coach which has been weathered and battered uh, it's missing some wheel, set of wheel where's the bogeys there they are just need to put that back on but that's going to sit nicely there in the siding I can also just put a loco there if I wanted to then we've got the two sidings to allow me to keep swapping over which locomotive or train comes in and out on the station. So that's the end of this video. My idea is to have a new video every couple of weeks, roughly about 10 minutes long, giving an update of where we're going. So I'll leave you now with the J15 just coming into the station with a little local passenger service. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have subscribed so you don't miss out for the next one but thanks for now and see you hopefully on the next one